I'm Pat Welsh from Pollock Media Group. I've programmed radio stations around the world in all genres, both over-the-air and internet radio stations. On behalf of Live 365, I'm presenting a series of tutorials on radio programming. This is part three of four of Principles of Programming Music Radio. In part three, I'll discuss the most important rules for music scheduling. This means the rules you put into your music scheduling system, as well as priorities when making final edits to your daily playlist. Now, music scheduling software, which we discussed briefly in part one, only does 90 to 95 percent of the job. Creating a great daily playlist requires the human touch to fine-tune it. And this is perhaps even more critical in internet radio, as playlists are broader and more diverse. So some of the keys include balance, making sure you get a balance of styles, eras, tempos, and textures, etc. Including the channel superstars, the essential artists that define your radio station. And simplicity, only using what you really need to use for codes and rules. I'll explain more about that in just a minute. Balance, a word I've used a lot, means making sure you don't get into a long run of any one kind of thing, having a balance of the styles and the eras, etc. The categories should be balanced within the hour. And make sure that every 15 minutes you have a microcosm of your station. Consistency means making sure that your station doesn't sound like one thing now and something completely different a half hour later. Station superstars is a critical concept. It means maintaining star power in your playlist. You should determine the 10 most essential artists for your station and be sure to play them frequently. I advise never going more than 15 minutes without playing one. You should also update the list of artists a couple of times a year, especially for contemporary stations. The more contemporary, the more important it is. The list is going to change as artists move in and out of fashion. On the other hand, for oldies stations, the list may remain static for a long time. And the final point here, garbage in, garbage out, it's essential to analyze what you've played in the past. This is important for a lot of reasons, not just with superstars. Because what you may intend to do may not be what actually happens. The input may not be the same as the output. Are your core artists really the ones that have been played the most for the last month? Turning to the rules you put into your music scheduling software, simplicity is the key. Use only what you need to use. Turn on just enough rules to stop the really bad things from happening. For example, use sound code not to describe every single song, but just to protect songs with different types of sound codes. That'll help promote variety and balance. The paradox is, the more rules that you use, the worse your rotations likely are. And by rotations, I mean songs moving throughout the various days and times of the day. Now, every station will have a different set of rules it needs to use, depending on what the programmer is trying to accomplish, but there are some basic rules that are used in almost all cases. These four rules are very common, if not universal. First, there's artist separation, rules that limit the amount of times an artist can be repeated within a given period of time, which is especially important for internet radio. Vertical and horizontal separation. Now, this is the biggest listener repetition complaint. In fact, repetition is almost always a function of this, of the same song playing at the same time day after day. It's not playing the song too much. It's playing the song in the same patterns all the time. Tempo. Most stations don't want to play too many down-tempo songs in a row. On the other hand, a quiet storm station will want to control tempo in the other direction. Music styles. Top 40 will want to separate pop from rock and hip-hop so they can get a good mix of all of them. For an oldie station, perhaps styles such as Motown, British Invasion, and bubblegum pop. And classical and jazz stations, if they don't categorize by these criteria in the first place, will likely want to add codes for different styles. Consistency is often overlooked when it comes to coding a music library. It's critical to use consistent standards so that you get a consistent mix of music. You want to maintain the same standards when coding slow songs 
or when coding medium songs. What's the difference between a slow and a medium? You have to know that going in when you start applying the codes. What's the difference between pop and rock or between hip hop and pop? It's best to try to code everything all at once if you can. Know your standards and apply them evenly across the whole library. The definition of a song style, for example, might change over time, so you have to go back and take a look at these codes from time to time. Perhaps a song was considered a very cutting edge, very hip hop song, but now that style of music is more just mainstream pop. Song codes, like many other things, can change over time. And with that, we'll conclude part three of Principles of Programming Music Radio. In part four, I'll discuss criteria for making changes to the music library.